Hello and welcome to this episode of She Walks, She Paints. Thank you for joining me today and if you have been liking, commenting or subscribing, as always, thank you so much. I really do appreciate it and it's really helping me with my channel. If you're new here, my name is Sarah and I will be going on a walk today somewhere in the beautiful country of Scotland and showing you what I find along the way, taking some photographs and hopefully going back to the studio and painting something for you in watercolour. Today we've come to a place called Strathmashie. It's one of our favourite stopping off points when we're on our way up north to the Highlands because it's a really great break, it's a nice place for Jack to have a little walk and a swim. We've never done a proper walk here before so there is a walk we can do which is up to an old abandoned village. It was abandoned for unknown reasons, there's a lot of mystery surrounding it um, but I love places like that with lots of history and lots of memories of lives lived there so we're going to have a little walk up to the abandoned village and take in the waterfall as well. So yeah it's going to be a great little walk through the woods and hopefully we're going to have a really great day. So let's head out and see what we can find. Do you want to go on an adventure? This is one of my favourite places in Scotland. It's like an oasis on the long car journey to the Northwest Highlands, and stopping here always means we were on our way to some kind of adventure. The dramatic gorge and the pine trees clinging to the rocks give it a timeless appearance, like a scene from a film. The falls here were actually used many times as a location for the British TV series, Monarch of the Glen. I have many fond memories of watching this show when I was younger, and it is a lovely feeling to visit the places that I once only saw through a screen.
Forestry Commission, who look after this woodland, recently removed a large metal viewing platform over the falls and replaced it with stone steps to this natural viewpoint instead. There are some sheer drops to be careful about, but I much prefer looking at the unspoilt view without that man-made structure. I love finding wild fruit like this, as it makes me think of all the people who would have crossed this landscape throughout history, relying on sweet fruits like this for essential sugars and nutrients.
mysterious settlement of Drum and Aird dates back to the 16th century. Parish records for the area show births and marriages taking place here until the end of the 18th century. However, by the end of the 19th century, only 100 years later, maps show the village to be abandoned, although no explanation is given. These stones are all that remain of a place that was once full of people going about their daily lives. No definite proof to explain the abandonment of the village has yet been found, but it is widely believed that the menfolk all perished in a blizzard when returning from a wedding feast. Without their sons, fathers and husbands to contribute to the community, the remaining villagers made the difficult choice to abandon their homes and seek shelter elsewhere. Abandoned houses are not a strange sight in Scotland. The notorious highland clearances of the 17th and 18th centuries forced many farmers to leave their land in favour of grazing livestock, a practice that the landowners favoured as more profitable. The displaced families made their way to towns and cities or further afield to the British colonies, leaving their dwellings to crumble, like a footprint left on the landscape. One famous former resident of Drum and Ed was Malcolm McPherson, who was shot at the Tower of London in 1743. A corporal in His Majesty's service, Malcolm was one of three men found guilty of leading the infamous mutiny of the Black Watch. The Black Watch was an independent regiment formed in 1725. In 1740, the regiment was made an official part of the British Army, and three years later, they were ordered to march to London for an inspection by the King. Rumours circulated that the regiment was to be sent to the West Indies, a very long way from home, and believed by many at the time to be a place of disease and death. On the night of the 17th of May, over 100 soldiers from the Black Watch Regiment decided to return to Scotland instead of waiting for their fate. They were caught on the journey up north and made to return to London to face trial. Three of the supposed ringleaders were sentenced to death, including Malcolm, who would never again return to the village of Drummond. My partner Willie has found some Black Watch badges while metal detecting in Scotland. Although not necessarily belonging to one of the mutineers, they are still a tangible link to the story. It is a strange and fascinating feeling to be able to hold a physical part of history in your hand.
Well, I hope you enjoyed that walk. I really did. It was such an interesting place to visit. And I can't believe we've never been there before. That's one of the things that I love about doing this channel is that I get out and I explore much more of Scotland than I've ever done before. So sometimes I take you on really familiar routes and other times or I find new places to explore that I never knew about. So yeah, I really hope you enjoy going on these journeys with me and exploring a bit more Scotland each time. It was so nice as well today just to get out and get lots of fresh air. I had lots of editing to do last week because I had three different locations in my video. So there was a lot of screen time. It does get very focused and very detail heavy. So yeah, it's nice to have this as the balance to get outside and just get some exercise and explore some new places. There's lots of signs of autumn in the air as well. It's a little bit chillier and there's lots of leaves turning. So yeah, but it's starting to head into autumn now, which is great. I love autumn, love all the leaves going. And yeah, I've got lots of choices for painting today. So I've got the bilberries that we found. I've got the rowan berries, some beautiful flowers still hanging on there as well. So lots of choices. I'll have a look at my photos and I will see you back in the studio to start painting. Once again, I decided to create my own composition from three separate photographs that I took. This has allowed me to capture the bilboos from many different angles, giving more visual interest to the painting. I really wanted to include lots of leaves as a challenge to myself. I find leaves really difficult to paint accurately, so I want to stop avoiding them and get more practice. Berries themselves seem simple, but are actually quite a challenge. They have a matte texture, but they do still reflect the light, which makes them more difficult to paint than a really shiny object, at least to me.
bilberry is the European blueberry, closely related to the larger American blueberry, which we often see in shops. Like many wild versions of the fruits that we know and love, bilberries are difficult to grow, and the fruit is very small, so they are rarely cultivated for commercial sales. RAF pilots were said to have consumed bilberry jam during World War II to sharpen their night vision for missions in the dark, although there is no medical evidence for bilberries providing such an effect. I wanted to capture the scuffs and bruising that the berries have. They are so delicate that they are covered in tiny marks. Without them, they look too smooth and perfect. I decided to add a red tinge to the leaves as a contrast to the vivid green colour, and a nod to one of the original photos that I used. This is something which happens to bilberry leaves due to certain soil conditions. I also like that it is reminiscent of the changing autumn leaves. My paintings are available as prints on my Etsy store. Purchasing a print means that you're helping to support my channel and genuinely helps me keep doing what I love and sharing that with you. You can also support me by liking, commenting or subscribing, following me on Instagram or by donating the cost of a coffee over on Ko-fi. Links to all my pages are in the video description below. Driving guys, rude. Are they bilberries? Mm -hmm. Oh, they were bilberries. Jack. <laughs> right, Munchkin. Oh, where you go? Are you coming back? Probably without falling in a pile of spiky pine trees. What? Just like that? Uh huh. Run away! Ah. Ah. Things I do for my art. Things you do for coffee and cake. <laughs> nothing, nothing girl, nothing, nothing Sybil. Jack, Jack, you nearly squished the bug. <laughs>